The Five Nights at Freddy's movie final trailer has been released, giving us a good look at our protagonists, a look at the perfect animatronics, and of course, a good look at the villain of the movie, Spring Bunny himself. Today, I'm going to be going frame by frame and breaking down the trailer to find every single Easter egg and detail that I can possibly find. So without further ado, and for one final time, subscribe, turn on notifications, and let's begin. We start with a shot inside the office, where the camera monitors turn on. On the monitor we can see the show stage, exactly mirroring the shot from FNAF 1, Pirate's Cove with its curtains closed, some angles of the exterior of the building, one of the arcade cameras which we've seen in the previous trailer, and multiple angles of the hallways that may lead into this office like we saw in the previous trailer as well. The camera system is using a Palco CM9760 KBD keyboard, and on the desk itself there's a walkie talkie, a red cup in reference to the red cup on the first game's desk, a black phone, in reference to the phone guy from the games which we still don't know whether he'll appear or not, even if it's just for a small cameo by Scott Cawthon, which if you somehow don't know he's the creator of the series. There's also a fan in reference to the constant need for at least one fan in every single game, and there's also randomly some tape as well as an actual tape, VHS, that says Mike on it, most likely being the tape that shows the introductory video that we saw in the first teaser with Bailey Winston playing Kim. This is most likely on the desk as Mike goes in for the first night. And there's also a ton of books and files on top of the monitors and to its side. And finally, there's a clock on top reading 1.31am. We then cut to a shot closer to the monitors showing the dining area of the establishment and more hallway cameras to the side, before cutting to a look of the camera feed of Pirate's Cove, and then more hallways containing multiple posters on the wall, most likely just going to be the movie versions of the posters from the first game. We then cut to these people breaking the lock of some garage, and we find out this isn't actually Mike opening it, and I've asked around and I still don't know which actor this is, but it's definitely not Mike, and not the night guard from the previous trailer either, so I really don't know who this is, but he's opening it alongside Carl, played by Joseph Poliquin, who's not only carrying a flashlight, but also sporting a shirt with the Midnight Motorist minigame on it from FNAF 6 which we see better later in the trailer. Hank played by Christian Stokes carrying a baseball bat, and Max played by Cat Connor Sterling looking quite uneasy. That guy who opened the garage that I'm just gonna call Other Dude is seen entering what looks to be the kitchen with Rage, holding a duffel bag. We then see him breaking open and stealing quarters from the arcades before cutting to Hank throwing a chair into the prize corner, which we saw in full in the previous trailer, and destroying it. In the background, we can also see that the Riding Rockets game is actually called Space Force. I've tried looking closer to what's in the prize corner, but can only really make out a chica mask of sorts, some packeted balloons, a bonnie plushie, the bonnie mask we talked about last time, and a freddy mask that's dropped off. We then cut back to the other dude smashing a King Cool pinball machine, next to a Gottlieb Royal Flush pinball machine on its right, and a Genie pinball machine to its left. Hank then knocks a toy dispenser over as we cut to Carl knocking over a bunch of fresh oven baked boxes for Freddy's in the kitchen. Carl then turns as something starts happening in the fridge, so he goes to open it but nothing is inside. He turns around and Chica is standing there staring right at him. The cupcake then frowns, scaring him enough for him to drop his flashlight and then it seemingly jumps at Carl and starts eating his face? This is when you know you're in for a true FNAF movie. We then cut to an exterior shot of Mike Schmidt, played by Josh Hutchison, arriving at Freddy's in a 1998-2003 to 2003 Honda Accord, according to the car experts in my comments last video. We also hear William, so, sorry, Steve Raglan, his alias to separate himself from the murders he committed, played by Matthew Lillard, who informs Mike of the easy job. Mike unlocks the place as he and Abby, played by Piper Rubio, Mike's sister who's basically the Elizabeth stand-in for the movie, with Abby being an anagram for baby, go inside. She seems scared but Mike comforts her, and something not a lot of people noticed but was sent to me on Twitter is that the poster behind Mike has Bonnie as a sphinx statue. And no, that's not a joke. This is me trying to get the same image because yes, I didn't believe it at first, but I am shocked to say that it's true. For some reason they've made Bonnie as a sphinx statue. 
you. Mike then turns the main power on for the building and we get a good look at the giant neon sign at the front, which might I just say looks great. We then get a good look of William and yes, he's wearing a purple tie, an obvious nod to the purple guy sprite, which is William in the games. And no, that's not a stretch because there's a lot more purple lighting later in the trailer too. Definitely a nod to that. We see Mike watching the cameras, now with the dining area on the bigger monitor. And with this view of the office, we can also once again see the celebrate poster from the first game that hasn't even been changed whatsoever just for the movie versions of the characters. Due to them being so accurate to the game's characters that it works anyway. We then get a closer look at the show stage and see Bonnie's eyes opening. And I have a feeling that this bit happens either when he's napping or while he's exploring the building in order to build the tension that he doesn't know that they're moving. We then see Abby coming from the bathroom as we saw in the last trailer, walking towards the show stage where Freddy's eyes turn red, which I still heavily believe to symbolize their anger as we see their eyes turn multiple shades throughout this trailer. Mike then walks through the entry, seemingly on the second night as he's without Abby this time, and he sees a poster for the location with all four animatronics and the tagline, get ready to rock. Foxy is also fixed up completely in this drawing, which is good to see considering every single other look of Foxy in anything, he's just teared apart and withered. Vanessa Monroe, played by Elizabeth Lyle, a police officer that for some reason comes to Freddy's, asks Mike whether he's met them yet, to which he's confused on who. She then goes and shows him what the Showtime button does, which itself is a reference to VR Help Wanted, where the Showtime button was originally going to begin the first ever stage performance we've ever seen from from these guys in the games, that was unfortunately cut. The curtains for all the animatronics open, giving us a good look at Foxy the Pirate Fox, with tears all throughout its body looking exactly like the game's Foxy, Bonnie the Bunny Rabbit, and interestingly the angle of this shot is purposely keeping some of Bonnie hidden, which may be representing that Bonnie is the second scariest animatronic, considering Scott has only had nightmares of Bonnie, and I know that may seem like a stretch but there's more on this in a moment. We also see Chica the Chicken with her cupcake. You can also see some sort of lines going around her face as if it can be taken off if needed but I'm not too sure what this could realistically be for but then of course we get a good look at Freddy Fazbear hidden from view which like I was talking about before I think is meant to be keeping you subconsciously more uneasy seeing him and creating more mysterious tension than seeing Chica for example who you can see entirely. Abby then watches as they all begin to perform their showtime routine. We then see more shots of the introductory video that we saw in the first teaser, where we see the place full of kids' parties, and then seeing the centipede arcade machine right next to a holster arcade game that still seems to be Area 51 because of the same warning sign, and with the pinball machines we talked about before in the background, we then see a ball pit which could be a small nod to the Into the Pit FNAF short story which we get more reference to later. As the screen glitches we can pause at the right time to see a shot of Freddy looking angry, once again not showing his full face to us in order to keep the tension of what his full face looks like when he's angry, before it goes back to Mike who was just relaxing listening to music, now opening his eyes. We then see this shot of him looking around with Freddy behind him again, before cutting to a shot of this sequence that I swear must be a dream or hallucination sequence of some sorts. We see the five children that were murdered back in the 1980s by William that possessed the animatronics, including Bonnie's possessor Jeremy, played by David Hudson Doddy, Golden Freddy's possessor Cassidy, Andrew, Michael, we don't know the exact name for this kid, we just don't. Played by Grant Feely, who interestingly enough had to dye his hair blonde for the movie. Foxy's possessor Fritz, played by Asher Colton Spence. Freddy's possessor Gabriel, played by Liam Hendricks. And Chica's possessor Susie, played by Jofalee Love. Mike asks what is this, as the children run away and he seemingly follows the child of Golden Freddy. I'm very interested to see what this scene ends up being, and why we're seemingly following the Golden Freddy child, and why we've seen in previous trailers, Garrett, played by Lucas Grant, that's basically the crying child stand-in for the movie, being driven away in this same location. Vanessa confirms the missing children's incident is what caused this place to shut down, and so this is definitely a different continuity for anyone who still thinks this is somehow in the game timeline as the murders in the games took place at an older location before this place specifically even existed. So yes, please go into this movie with the idea that this is its own original story and it won't really solve anything for the games at all. Trust me, you will leave disappointed if you think this will solve anything huge. But either way, in the background of this shot there's also a Freddy poster showing the sign at the front. I also just realised that the person in this torture machine was knocked out and is fast asleep 
only waking up and moving again slowly once the machine locks him in. We then see that night guard from the previous trailer played by Ryan Reunike now trapped in the machine that we know for a fact Mike gets trapped in later and likely escapes. But unlike Mike, I think this night guard actually dies in this scene. And that's why Freddy's is in need of a new night guard at the start of the movie. We then get confirmation Liam Hendricks is Freddy and not Golden Freddy's possessor as he appears in front of Max before running away and leading her directly to Freddy. There's a lot of things in this room too, including these big endoskeleton eyes, which could have been from another location or possibly in case these animatronics need repairing. But also if you look closely and increase the brightness, you can also see what looks to be Withered Foxy above the cabinet in the top right. Thanks to Anton for pointing this out. Max then gets up on the chair and looks inside Freddy's mouth where we get a good look at the endoskeleton underneath the costume, which is called Endo 01. And you can tell it's based off that model from its teeth. Then a hand reaches out, possibly killing her. We then move on to this fast paced section where we can see Foxy peeking out of Pirate's Cove like he does in the games with his fully angry eyes. We then see Abby hiding in the ball pit from the first trailer, hiding from Foxy. Then we see other dude holding the same wrench he broke the pinball machine with and holding the same duffel bag he had in the kitchen, encountering Bonnie who looks extremely angry and ready to kill him. We then cut to Corey X Kenshin tilting his rear view mirror to see Golden Freddy, which we saw in the previous trailer. Chica in the kitchen frowning and looking angry, Foxy slamming his foot on a ball from the ball pit, and then we see Vanessa being grabbed and choked by Spring Bonnie. In fact, this might be the reason why she's in the hospital that we saw in the previous trailer after Mike possibly saves her from being choked to death. Abby then holds her mouth shut hiding behind the centipede arcade as Foxy hunts for her. In fact, you can see Foxy actually walking around. This whole sequence could be a reference to the Silver Eyes FNAF book where it starts off with Charlie hiding from Foxy in the FNAF 1 location behind and between arcades. The other dude then runs down this random hallway as we cut to Foxy running down the hall to the office, just like he does in the first game. And yes, he's going towards the office because note the employee board on the left. Which speaking of, Raz Bowser posted the full board on Twitter and we can confirm that the board contains Dorko, 8-Bit Ryan, Razbowski, Baza, Fusion Z Gamer, DJ Sturf, and John Wolfie. I think the others are just extras but if not I'm sorry I just don't recognize them. We once again see Mike breaking through this vent which I still think leads to William's hideout again kind of like the Silver Eyes where there's a camera system underneath the stage and Mike may use this vent to escape the hideout after getting out of the torture machine to return back to the main area. Vanessa tells Mike how he can't stop them and it looks like they may be having a dispute in this scene. We then see the animatronics performing and uh, Bonnie exploding. <laughs> Look at this frame, he's just fully lit. We can see in the first and last frame that it comes from the guitar so something weird is going on there. But we then see what appears to be a younger Mike, played by Wyatt Parker, running away or towards something. I believe this is most likely younger Mike running towards Garrett being driven away. Think of it, he could be envisioning his younger self running after Garrett, symbolizing death, Garrett being taken away from him, and he then stops and snaps back to reality as he looks quite distraught before even seeing the main ghost and then looking to where he is in life now, being haunted by the ghost of Freddy's. Whether it's a hallucination because of those spirits, or it's just a nightmare dream sequence, I definitely think it's representing his stages in life and or things that haunt him, and in this case, literally. And who's the one responsible for everything that's happened to him? Hmm, I wonder why he's in the sequence. Moving on and Vanessa says, it's too late, he's coming. As we see Mike stare at something that makes him feel nothing but dread. And then we see the spring bunny suit which Matthew Lillard is definitely inside of at the entrance of the pizzeria, most likely stopping someone from escaping which even despite how this trailer is framing it, may even be Abby as she's currently been shown to be on her own a lot in this movie. But let's just take a second to truly look at this image. This is insane when you put it into perspective that this movie has been almost a decade being built up and being worked on behind the scenes. You can see that he's slightly withered and decayed on the left and is slowly becoming the spring trap we know too well. He also has two buttons just like the spring bunny has not only in illustrations from the character encyclopedia but also from the unused model in VR Help Wanted. Mike then screams as we cut back to spring bunny swiping his knife 
which is a reference to Scream 1996, another movie that Matthew Lillard was in. We then see the logo for the movie, which releases in theatre and on the streaming platform Peacock on the 27th of October. And before we move on to the posters and the behind the scenes images, there was also an advertisement found on TikTok for the movie that shows a few more shots. The only real new things added are a shot of the entry from the security camera's view, a new angle of the shot from the previous trailer where Mike turns off the power instead of on like he does in this trailer, possibly because he may think that the animatronics are moving on their own due to the power being on, and we also see a shot of Mike shuffling backwards that we saw a frame of in the last trailer, and we see that he's looking at Foxy on the stage, seemingly on rails moving forward and swinging his hook. More on that later. Besides that, there's not much else revealed in the TikTok advertisement. We also got a new set of character posters for Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, The Cupcake, and Foxy, all of which are referencing the Into the Pit book cover, where Spring Bonnie is coming out of the ball pit which I predict we will get at some point, most likely closer to the movie's release. And if we don't, that would be such a missed opportunity to recreate it perfectly. We also got two new main posters, one in the ball pit featuring them all in one, and then another outside Freddy's featuring them all, which is the international poster. This wasn't all we got today either, as the YouTubers who visited the set also released exclusive behind the scenes photos of them all meeting the animatronics, which is just incredible. And detail wise, we can also see the new poster on the wall are the individual animatronics. We can also see that Foxy looks to be on rails like we saw in the TikTok trailer, and we also see that these animatronics look damn amazing. I am so excited for this movie, even more than I thought I would be. Did you even remember there's still an unnamed female villain in this movie that hasn't been shown in a single trailer or photo anywhere? There's still so much more to this movie than we've been shown. So subscribe and turn on notifications because when this movie drops you can be certain that I'll be uploading my friends and I reacting to it, our full review on it, and also, of course, breaking down every single easter egg and detail I could find in the entire movie. So I hope you all enjoyed the video, learned something new, and have a great day. Bye guys, I'll see you soon.